So, you want to play Yasoki, do you? Welcome to an all Starfinder episode here on the Maple Table. Today we are going to be covering playable races, their attributes, and uh, maybe some fun variants you might want to throw into your game if you, uh, if you are the type to allow it. Today we're going to cover the Yasoki, so buckle up, because I don't think a Yasoki would. Hello everyone, my name is Nathaniel. Today we're going to be talking about the very ingenious Yasoki. Please stay towards the end of the video as I will have some uh, special variants of the race that I'm going to discuss at the end of this, uh, at the end of today's video, and hopefully you can uh, work them into your game or maybe form an idea of a new character to play based around these uh, these fun variants. The Yasoki are a race of rat folk, and they are spread far and wide throughout the galaxy. At character creation, they will get a plus two dexterity bonus, a plus two intelligence bonus, and a minus two to their strength. They are also a bit on the light side when it comes to hit points, coming in at only two hit points. Being that you are a Yasoki and that you are a very resourceful individual, you will gain a couple of starting abilities for your Yasoki character. One of which will be that the Yasoki can store items in its cheek pouches. That's right, they do have big cheeks. Not squirrel cheeks, but uh, big cheeks nonetheless. They will also come with dark vision, pretty standard for most rats if you ask me. And they are also a bit more spry and nimble than many of the other races uh, of whom they get to encounter in the stars. And finally, they will also get a plus two racial bonus to all engineering, stealth, and survival checks. The Yasoki stand at almost three to four feet tall if you go on to the higher end of the scale. They look like humanoid rats, complete with fur, long teeth, whiskers, twitching noses, and a tail that is somewhat prehensile. And their tiny hands make them excellent tinkerers. And I guess their keen noses also makes them pretty good chemists. The term Yasoki uh, generates from their very well-respected culture on Akaton. The rat folk existed on many worlds before space travel was, uh, was a thing yet. And after space travel was commonplace, all the different species of rat folk came to be known collectively as the Yasoki. That was a moniker that they came up with after the fact. Because there were so many subspecies and variant, this, and it was becoming very difficult for everyone to tell each other apart, this was just easier on not only the Yasoki, but everybody else who had to deal with them. As they became one race, the Yasoki. Yasoki society is quite chaotic. Almost all of them are wheelers and dealers, and a typical Yasoki home will have many half-completed projects. Not unlike my own. And this state of half-completed project is just a Yasoki's state of existence. That's just how it is. Forever. A Yasoki will tend to form very strong bonds with their friends, their family, and the people that they tend to travel with. Speaking of families, the Yasoki families also tend to be very large, and because of this, this will usually mean for any Yasoki character that there is a cousin or a relative, an aunt, an uncle, who is in some major spaceport or some major settlement, wherever the characters may be going, who could potentially help them or hinder them, depending on that relationship. I would say that the Yasoki are prideful, but not boastful. There is a big difference. Yasokis tend to have a very good sense of self-worth and self-worth as a species. They're very keen to do a good job and to prove that they can do uh, to prove that they can do a good job and that they are the best for the job. It's in this strong sense of knowing their own ability that makes them very good at what they do. The Yasoki are not ashamed to have a what other races would deem to be a lesser job, being the junk collectors or the explorers of the spaceship insides. They actually uh, don't get offended by this, and it's a source of pride for them. And that's what I mean when I say prideful, not boastful. And of course, this sense of knowing their self-worth and due to their physical size, it tends to make the other races overlook them or, at the very worst, underestimate them. Please do not underestimate a Yasoki. Yasoki names tend to be very short. If a Yasoki was given a long name, they will tend to shorten it for informal use. 
Nicknames are also just as important to a Yosoki as their real names are. Because the Yosoki are so widespread, there were so many of them and so many different subspecies that all sort of blended into the one conglomerate that is the Yosoki, there are a couple of subspecies which I would like to mention here. And uh, these ones might be fun to throw into a campaign, maybe throw your players for a loop, or run this by your DM and just see if you can have an interesting character concept with one of these. One such subspecies will be called the Anthromorphic. The Anthromorphic will have more human-shaped features while still, we'll call it predominantly human, rat second. They would walk on regular legs versus rat legs like the regular Yosoki would. The animal legs would also be called digitigrade legs, would also be accompanied by longer arms as well. Their ability modifiers would be a plus two to intelligence, plus two to charisma, and a minus two to strength. Another variant that I think would be a lot of fun to play or throw into a campaign would be the Yosoki who grew up in no gravity or low gravity. That's right, growing up on a world with no or low gravity does affect one's bone structure and the way that the body uh, exists within space because it doesn't it's not being held down constantly by gravity. In an environment like this, a Yusoki would be probably much taller than the regular four feet, very gaunt, very thin, have probably a very lanky body as well. This variant will be known as the No-Grav Yusoki. Their ability modifiers would be a plus four to dexterity. They are very agile and very nimble, but that does come at a cost because their bones are much more brittle uh, and not as strong as somebody who grew up on a heavier gravity world. And as such, they would receive a minus two to their constitution. I hope you've enjoyed today's video on the Yosoki and some fun variants you might want to throw into your game or to your next campaign. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the variants, what you might not use in your game, or would you allow a variant subspecies of Yosoki on your table? Until next time, may your adventures be memorable and your games enjoyable. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.